Thank you, Masini and Barak. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, I will talk about the rotational angiogram and the uh, echo navigator. Uh, recently, we used uh, advanced uh, uh, diagnostic modalities, such as uh, this, this one, and, but I, today, I only focus on the last two. Uh, this is the patients with pulmonary artery javiest matka, and uh, we unify this vessel but as you can see, the right pulmonary course is very long and tortuous, and there is a stenosis and LPA stenosis on here. So the, I used the long schist to approach to this stenotic vessel, and uh, balloon angioplasty was performed. But unfortunately, after this one, and the dissection was occurred, and uh, as time passed, it was aggravated, and the distortion was aggravated, and the aneurysm size a little bit bigger, so I decided to put a stent on there and I put a stent. But however, I recognize this segmental artery origin was very stenotic. But I was exhausted at that time, so I postponed the proce uh, interventional procedure next time. Several months later, I could use the rotational angiogram. So the, uh, re with using this one, you can see the well-positioned stent, no aneurysm, and you can see the, uh, this segmental artery origin was very stenotic. Because of the long course of this RPA course, uh, if we uh, do not use the rotational angiogram, it may be very difficult to intervene. But I used, uh, as I showed before, maybe your memory is still very vivid and hot, and uh, I can I could use, uh, easily select this stenotic vessel with a 3D roadmap and confirm this, uh, this artery, uh, the, the rotating the camera, and perform the balloon angioplasty easily and uh, good result. So I could find out the, the stent origin and it can, uh, may uh, contribute to the stenosis. So after I checked it, we can find out uh, opening on the stent. So the, after this, I used it for a peripheral uh, pulmonary stenosis patient. As you can see, there are several stenosis on there. And I could select it with uh, easily with using a 3D rotation, the roadmap on the fluoroscopic image, as you could see it uh, in this afternoon. And uh, ba successfully balloon it. And this is another patient. This is the patient's uh, today's live case on the right pulmonary artery situation. As you can see, the right top of pulmonary artery, there are several segmental artery stenosis and also on the right row pulmonary arteries. So actually on the row pulmonary artery, there are three portion I intervene. And also on the upper, par upper pulmonary artery, I intervene two, two, two sites successfully with one angiogram. This is another case, coarctation of aorta. There is a, a pressure gradient about 15 millimeter mercury. And using a rotational angiogram, we could see, you can see the stenotic area on the descending aorta. And I applied the roadmap on here. But uh, as you can see, the, this stent position is a little bit deep. It may disturb the flow to the subclavian artery. So I little pull a little bit back and I open it. I use the uh, self-expandable stent on this patient. So open it, not to disturb the subclavian artery flow and finally open it like this. That's the initial. And later it's a little bit enlarged. It's a 20 millimeter expandable stent. So the, I have had the, I have performed rotational angiography in 12 patients so far. The most of them are uh, peripheral pulmonary stenosis and two patients are coarctation of aorta. Their mean age was 12 and uh, 41 kilogram. And the uh, site was pulmonary or uh, coarctation. And target vessel is uh, one, two, five. So mean target vessel number is 2.3 in one catheterization. And the uh, contrast amount was mean was 1.3 millimeter per kilo. So it's much 
less than the usual angiogram for the peripheral pulmonary stenosis intervention. So the advantage of rotational angiogram with the 3D roadmap is, uh, as you can see, easy to select and measure. And uh, less angiography, so it means less radiation and less contrast dose. And finally, it reduces the procedural time. Okay, uh, and then I move on to the echo navigator. It's, it means uh, combining image floral and echo. So first, we, we use the trans esophageal echo. First, to detect the head of the transducer by fluoroscopy. And if we uh, making a mark on the, the echo image like this, then it automatically appeared on the floral image. Uh, while we move the camera angle, the marker automatically follows the anatomical position. So it's very easy to select or uh, find out the uh, position we want to see. And this is an example. There is an ASD. There is ASD floor. While I we I'm performing a balloon measuring balloon sizing, you can see the this linear line on the echo, just on the floor image, it's well matched. There is an indentation, with, there may be an ASD like this. And uh, we can put a, uh, deploy the device while we are watching this ASD line over there. So it's very easy to uh, implant the, this kind of device without, uh, yeah, very easily. But uh, for closing on ASD is a very straightforward interventional procedure. So simple ASD, I do not use this one. But for the multiple ASD, if I first cross need to cross the big ASD, bigger ASD, I use the uh, this kind of uh, mo uh, imaging modality. And also, when we perform the transseptal puncture, we usually puncture the center of the atrial septum, but in some cases, we need to puncture the little bit posterior and the superior side uh, to cross the paravalvular leg on the mitral valve on the medial side. It's very difficult to select. On that purpose, we can easily puncture that side using echo navigator. Yeah, and uh, for selecting a mitral valve paravalvular leg, it's very easy to, you, to select with the wire with this Im imaging modality. And also nowadays we can put a percutaneous valve on the pulmonary position, aortic position, or the tricuspid position. It can be used and it may be very helpful for positioning of the percutaneous valve. Also can be used the percutaneous based closure. I would like to show you one case of paravalvular leak. This is an old guy who had performed the uh, mitral valve replacement three times. However, the paravalvular leak was severe, and uh, he showed the hemolytic anemia due to mechanical hemolysis, and uh, his comorbidity was uh, uh, liver cirrhosis and uh, kidney problem, uh, so many problems. As you can see on the chest PA, LA wall was calcified. It may be very difficult to performing a uh, setter puncture. So I use the hybrid procedure, the small thoracotomy and apical approach. To cr As you can see, the echo shows the paravalvular leak, and this is the mitral valve, and there is a leak. And I can easily s uh, cross the, this paravalvular leak with the wire and the catheter. As you can see, this is the wire and the measuring with the balloon and uh, insert the uh, amplus vascular plug. And uh, on the medial side, there is another defect. I close it with the plug. However, after it, there is a still remained a uh, paravalvular leak on the lateral side. So I put uh, another vascular plug easily. Through the apical approach, we can select so many paravalvular leak very easily. However, uh, it's, uh, we need the thoracotomy, but if I use the echo navigator, we can puncture the proper site and we may, I, I may select this probable leg more easily. 
Uh, after the device closure, there is no palpable leak at all. So uh, there are 12 cardiac centers which use the echo navigator so far. So the, our center is one of them. Uh, is so in conclusion, interventional catheterization has become an important component of the management of congenital disease. New imaging and multimodality integration improves the outcome and the safety of interventional catheterization. Thank you for your attention.